Welcome back to Monitors Unboxed. Today we're looking at the successor to one of the best value 4K gaming monitors on the market, the Gigabyte M27UA. The original M27U was one of the most affordable 4K high refresh monitors when it launched, and before that the M28U was also a great value purchase in this category. Gigabyte seemed to have been at the forefront of the affordable 4K monitor market for a while now, so hopefully the M27UA will continue this trend. Compared to previous M-series monitors, not much has changed with the M27UA. It's using a 27-inch 3840x2160 IPS LCD panel with a maximum refresh rate of 160Hz. Rated specifications are very similar to the M27U in areas like brightness and contrast. We're getting the same sort of gaming features like adaptive sync support, and even the port selection is basically the same. The only real difference appears to be a drop in HDR certification from Display HDR 600 to Display HDR 400, although the previous model only had 8 edge lit dimming zones, which led to a poor HDR experience, so I'm not sure how relevant this will be. Now you might be thinking that just because the specifications of the monitor are the same doesn't mean the actual panel used here is the same as previous variants. But in the case of the M27UA versus M27U, they use the same AU Optronics panel. So this is basically just a refresh of the M27U. We'll see whether this is true in terms of final performance throughout this review, but it's safe to say that this display is not an evolutionary step. In terms of design, this is a typical Gigabyte product, simple and functional. The front features the display panel with slim bezels on three sides and a larger bottom chin. The rear features Gigabyte's standard M-series design with black plastic used throughout, no RGB LED lighting, and the use of two finishes, both matte and glossy. It's basic, but it looks fine, and as the entire product is black, it should fit in well with most setups. The quality of materials and overall construction is perfectly fine, but it's not going to blow you away. The stand is of average sturdiness and only supports height and tilt adjustability, no rotation support here. With that said, the maximum height on offer is good, and the stand base is a smaller flat V-shaped design than we used to see on Gigabyte monitors, so it doesn't use up too much desk space. The screen coating is a very standard matte finish for an IPS LCD, which you'll probably have experienced before on other monitors. It has a light to moderate amount of coating grain, and does a great job at minimizing mirror reflections, although obviously it diffuses light in brighter environments. Given that you might want to use this sort of display for desktop productivity work, I think the choice to go with this sort of matte finish makes sense. For port selections, we get one DisplayPort 1.4 with DSC, two HDMI 2.1 48 gigabits per second ports, a USB-C supporting DP Alt mode and 18 watts of power delivery, plus a three-port USB 5 gigabits per second hub. This is a pretty good range of connectivity, and Gigabyte do provide KVM switch functionality here, which has been standard on most of their monitors for a few years now. The OSD is controlled through a directional toggle and includes Gigabyte's typical feature set. This includes a great range of gaming specific features like crosshairs, an FPS counter, sniper mode, shadow boosting, and an info dashboard. There's also a decent range of color controls, so generally this monitor is well equipped compared to similar products. It's time to assess motion performance, and as usual, Gigabyte offer 5 overdrive settings. I'll start with the off mode, which delivers a 10 millisecond average response time with no overshoot, so this is pretty typical overdrive disabled behavior. Native panel performance looks okay, but I suspect most gamers will opt to use overdrive. At 160Hz using the picture quality setting, Gigabyte improved performance to a 6.27 millisecond average with only a negligible amount of inverse ghosting. We also see a good level of cumulative deviation and are able to confirm that refresh compliance is 64% for this combination of overdrive and refresh rate, which is suitable. The balance mode is a supercharged version of the picture quality mode. Response times are faster, now at a 4.67 millisecond average, but overshoot has also increased, again, mostly for those closer transitions. The PQ and balance modes have pretty similar cumulative deviation, but they are similar visually as well. The PQ mode a bit slower, the balance mode with a bit more overshoot. I personally prefer the PQ mode over balance at the max refresh rate, but it's not a strong recommendation. There's not much in it. The speed mode is not especially usable in my opinion, pushing up overshoot significantly, leading to an inverse ghosting rate of 45%. Cumulative deviation is worse than previous modes tested, so I wouldn't recommend using it. 
For variable refresh rate gamers, there's a clear choice here, and that's the picture quality mode. This mode delivers the best experience with minimal overshoot down to around 100 or 85 hertz. At 60 hertz, this setting does have a small amount of overshoot visible in things like the UFO test, but this doesn't impact gaming all that much. And if it bothers you, you can reduce the overdrive setting to off. I'd say this monitor does qualify for a single overdrive mode experience as the picture quality mode is good enough to set and forget while gaming across a wide range of refresh rates. In contrast, the bounce mode has performance quickly fall away at refresh rates below 160Hz. For example, at 120Hz, the inverse ghosting rate rises to 32% and hits 40% at 100Hz, which is the sort of range you might be using with a 4K monitor on a regular basis. For this reason, I just stick to the picture quality mode. Also worth mentioning briefly is that Gigabyte do offer a Smart OD setting, which changes the overdrive setting at different refresh rates. However, this setting continually chooses the wrong overdrive to use, typically opting for a higher mode with more overshoot than I'd like to see. Ideally, it would use picture quality overdrive with perhaps off at lower refresh rates, but it appears to mostly stick with bounce or even speed type settings. This is an issue that I've continually brought up about Gigabyte Smart OD Overdrive across many monitors now, and it's something that years later they still haven't fixed or improved. In fact, what you've just heard, I directly copied and pasted from my M27U review. When we compare these results to other monitors, we can see that using the best overdrive settings, the M27UA and M27U deliver basically identical performance. At all settings, there were only minor differences between these two monitors, in 2024, this sort of performance is fine, but it isn't up there with the best 4K gaming monitors. The LG 27GR93U is one millisecond faster, though tops out at 144 versus 160 hertz. The ASUS XG27UCG slides in just below five milliseconds on average. The M27UA isn't miles off the pack though. On average across the refresh rate range, the M27UA is a mid-table performer and again, basically delivers the same performance as the M27U. With a single overdrive mode experience in hand, this is a pretty good result and there's no IPS LCD product that offers a level above what the M27UA provides. Performance is also favorable up against slightly older monitors like the LG 27GP950, but not to the degree where you'd consider upgrading from that LG monitor to this new Gigabyte one. There's currently a bit of stagnation in IPS LCD performance in the 4K tier, so we see a big clump of monitors offering near identical cumulative deviation on average. Everything from the Cooler Master GP27U to the ASUS XG27UCS is a much of a muchness in terms of response time performance, and the experience you get is more related to stuff around the edges, like whether it's a single overdrive mode experience, or whether motion performance is faster with more overshoot or slower with less overshoot. The M27UA was just 4% better in this metric than the M27U, and that's not something you can notice in practice. The M27UA is still a good choice for fixed refresh rate console gaming. At 120Hz, it's a mid-table performer. At 60Hz, it's reasonable as well. And all of this is accessible without changing the overdrive setting. This monitor does offer backlight strobing in the form of Gigabyte's AIM Stabilizer Sync, which does work with Adaptive Sync simultaneously. However, there are no options to tweak strobe timing or length, and it doesn't work below 75Hz. You can use the feature with that Adaptive Sync if you'd like. The quality of AIM Stabilizer Sync here is decent when the max refresh rate is relatively close to the max refresh set in Windows. So for example, if the display is set to 160 hertz and you're using it in the 140 to 160 hertz range, it'll look pretty good. Some minor strobe crosstalk is not the cleanest result and there's some red fringing artifacts, but it's usable. However, at least when Adaptive Sync is enabled, the feature does become less usable at lower refreshes. So set to 160Hz and using it at 100Hz, the mode has more red fringing, the double image is a bit more noticeable, and it's blurrier. When disabling Adaptive Sync and just using the display at a fixed 100Hz, backlight strobing is clearer and more effective, though still not amazing. So it's not an awful or unusable feature, but it is a trade-off between increased clarity and increased artifacts. I suspect most gamers will prefer to keep AIM Stabilizer Sync disabled, but it is available for experimentation or the occasional competitive game. There's no difference in input lag between the M27U and M27UA. Most 4K gaming monitors I've tested have a processing delay less than one millisecond, then the rest is dictated by the refresh rate and response times. You won't find a substantial difference between any of these products, except for maybe those OLEDs right at the top of the chart. And then for power consumption, I also found, you guessed it, 
near identical results for the M27U and M27UA. They use the same panel, so it makes sense that power consumption is roughly the same. The older M28U is less efficient, and other products like the XG27UCS are more efficient, so the M27UA sits somewhere in the middle. The M27UA's color gamut is very similar to other IPS LCDs, reporting in with 95% coverage of DCI-P3, making it a wide gamut display. With 74.7% .7 coverage of Rec 2020, the overall color gamut is better than the M27U, but it's not at the top level of the charts, which are usually occupied by quantum dot monitors. One area that has improved for the M27UA versus M27U is factory calibration. Out-of-the-box performance is excellent for grayscale, delivering a low delta E average, good adherence to sRGB gamma, and no major color temperature tint. It does suffer from the usual issues where the wide color gamut is left unclamped for SDR content, leading to oversaturation in some situations, like watching YouTube videos. But when you compare the results from the M27U to the M27UA, you'll notice a substantial improvement from the new UA model. The delta E average has halved for grayscale and now comes in right near the top of the chart. Color checker performance is improved as well. Like prior Gigabyte gaming monitors, there's an included sRGB mode, however, it locks most settings outside of brightness. The good news is that it's well calibrated, offering similar grayscale performance to the default configuration, but now with appropriate sRGB gamut clamping and low delta E's in saturation and color checker. Again, this means the M27UA outperforms the M27U. The new model is slightly better in grayscale performance, leading to an excellent result here, and it's much better in color checker. While the M27U wasn't a particularly amazing showing, the new M27UA model restores sRGB mode performance back to the levels of the M28U, and again, you'll see it towards the top of the charts here. While for most gamers, I'd recommend just using the sRGB mode most of the time, or using the default configuration, performance can be improved to a small degree through a full calibration. I used Calman for this and achieved great results, and this makes the monitor nicely suited to work in sRGB and P3 color spaces, though it's less good for Adobe RGB. Maximum SDR brightness tops out at 385 nits, which is basically the same result as the M27U, and it's better than the older M28U. This is going to be plenty for most indoor use cases, though other 4K gaming monitors do get up to 100 nits brighter or thereabouts if you really need the additional brightness. Minimum brightness of 47 nits is acceptable. I was pleased to see the M27UA's contrast ratio isn't quite as lackluster as the M27U, possibly due to minor backlight differences and panel variants. My M27U unit was down at 912 to 1, but the M27UA was back up to 1059 to 1, which is a better result from an IPS LCD and more in line with other products. Again, this isn't a good contrast ratio, IPS LCDs have poor contrast relative to other monitor types, but I really don't want to see results down near 900 to 1 if it can be avoided. Viewing angles, pretty good from this IPS display, which is pretty typical. Uniformity was decent, the center section of my unit was very consistent with only some fall off on the left and right edges. This is a decent quality panel in this regard, although you can expect some panel variance unit to unit. A quick note here on HDR, given the downgraded certification for the M27UA versus M27U. Basically, Gigabyte have disabled local dimming on the M27UA, going from 8 edge lit zones to no local dimming, and dropping peak HDR brightness by a little over 100 nits. The old model did about 570 nits peak, this new one does about 460 nits peak. This puts the M27UA firmly into fake HDR territory. While HDR performance is a downgrade, fundamentally both monitors do not provide a good HDR experience. The M27U with local dimming had most of its 8 zones active during typical HDR content, so having local dimming fully disabled on the M27UA isn't much of a change visually. I wouldn't purchase either of these products if you desire a good HDR experience, and I would only really consider these to be SDR monitors. In the Hub Essentials checklist, Gigabyte do an impressive job of advertising this monitor. I was especially pleased to see Gigabyte list a 5 millisecond greater gray response time, which is much closer to the real average response time I recorded for this monitor, enough to get a borderline result. Most companies would just slap a 1 millisecond label on this display and call it a day, and while Gigabyte do list a 1 millisecond MPRT response time, I really do appreciate the inclusion of an actual greater grey number that is within the ballpark of the real panel capabilities. 
The feature support matrix shows a pretty typical experience. I was glad to see that 60 hertz input lag is below one millisecond, that the sRGB mode delivers excellent calibration, and that there are some nice feature inclusions like a KVM switch. Outside of this, the M27 UA has a standard feature set that you'll find with many other 4K LCD gaming monitors. Overall, the Gigabyte M27 UA is a very minor refresh of the Gigabyte M27U. If you were considering the M27U and saw that the monitor offered at your local retailer is the M27UA instead, you can be secure in the knowledge that both monitors use basically the same panel and are nearly identical in performance. This isn't always the case with a product refresh and new product name, but it is the case here for better or worse. The main areas which are identical between the M27UA and M27U are motion performance, brightness, viewing angles, uniformity, design, and port selection. The M27UA offers a very standard experience from a 4K IPS LCD gaming monitor released in 2024, and there's little difference in clarity to other products you'll find on the market. Same sort of refresh rate at 160Hz and very similar IPS LCD speeds. There's no step forward in performance on offer here, but it's good to confirm no regression either, no cheaping out or downgrading of the panel. There are some areas where the M27UA performs better. Factory calibration is better on the new model, bringing the UA more in line with the typical Gigabyte M-series product, which are usually pretty well calibrated. The contrast ratio is better, at least on the models I tested, and the color gamut is slightly higher as well. So if you find yourself in a situation where the M27U and M27UA are both available at the same price, I'd go with the M27UA. The area that's been downgraded on the new variant is HDR, with the M27UA removing local dimming entirely and dropping HDR brightness somewhat. However, the older M27U had pretty crappy HDR to begin with, so this downgrade has little to no material impact on the HDR experience. It's still bad, it's still not worth buying this monitor for HDR. The M27UA has an MSRP of $450 US, which is actually lower than the launch price of the M27U when I reviewed it last year. Back then, the M27U was around $530, so launch versus launch, the new model is cheaper, and I'd like to see that sort of price improvement over time given how similar the two monitors are. On the other hand, the M27U has dropped in price to as little as $400 in July of this year, having previously been available around $450, just like the M27UA. At a $50 premium, the M27UA isn't a bad deal, but it's certainly less compelling and isn't a must-buy. I imagine within the life cycle of this product though, that it will be available for at the same price or even lower than the M27U, as Gigabyte monitors usually fall in price within six to 12 months. So right now, you might go with the M27U over the M27UA. Later down the track, the M27UA might be the better buy. Here in Australia, both models are basically the same price now at around $700 redos. In my opinion, this is still a great monitor in terms of value and is worth considering if you're in the market for something 4K. $400 to $450 is about as cheap as 4K high refresh LCDs get these days, and the M27UA is generally a great product. The LG 27GR93U is also worth considering. It fluctuates in price a bit, but can be had for as low as $420, though it's not overly different to what this Gigabyte monitor is offering. Other products I've recently looked at, like the ASUS XG27 UCS, are too expensive in comparison. So again, M27UA is a pretty good monitor. So that's it for this one. If you're interested in supporting Monitors Unboxed and the testing that we do here, please do consider signing up to our Patreon page, where you gain access to things like the ICC profiles and calibrated settings that we create during these reviews for all the monitors that we test. We've also got our Discord chat, a great place to chat about monitors, get product recommendations, just talk about the industry. Very interesting place in there. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.